Hello viewers, Super GT here. Welcome to the Grand Prix of Absolute Carnage. Yes, this is the Gran Turismo F1500 TA. Whenever this car gets featured in the game, it is always a very chaotic race. As we can see here, there's going to be some sketchy moments for everyone. It's one of the hardest cars to drive in the game, I would say. And with that said, let's jump into the first race. So it's into Lagos, 14 laps. You have to use the medium and the hard tyre. Standing start, which is always a great contributor to carnage. Spaniard there goes a little bit early and then gets a shocking start. In fact, I don't think he even moves. But away we go in towards the first corner. We're going to gain a couple of positions there. Park it on the inside, almost into the back of the Czech driver there. And down the hill through the centre S. We've made it into 10th position. Starting at the back for the lols, for the banter. And then we head down towards turn number four. Late on the brakes. A little bit deep, doing our best Max Verstappen impression there. But we keep a position, actually. We, we keep 10th on this occasion. But we get a penalty. We're definitely doing Max's uh, impression here. Uh, so half a second penalty, just dri uh, driving a little bit wide. Towards the end of the lap, into is that Glock corner. Trying to get a good launch off of this one. Two Spaniards here. One of them is just going to drive straight off the track. Forget that he has to turn left onto the main straight. Look how quick this thing is. He is absolutely ballistic. 200 miles an hour onto the brakes in towards turn number one. A little bit deep. We're side by side with this other guy. It's Nigel Mansell and we're just going to slide ahead on the exit. Uh, we're going to have to serve this penalty though as we come down the, the back straight here. You don't actually lose too much time unfortunately in this car. Now because it is Pretty much, it's based on like classic F1. I'd say sort of late 80s we're looking at here, aren't we? Maybe even early 90s. And therefore the, the gear changes are quite clunky and slow. So you do have to make sure that you're in the correct gear at the right time. A little bit wide there, past the check driver. We almost made contact with earlier in the race. And as a result of going wide there at the exit of the center S, one second penalty. And um, this car therefore proving very difficult to drive this is my first race we're going to get another penalty there for driving wide on the exit of turn 5 serving that penalty not losing too much time just two positions for two seconds but yeah difficult car to drive this is my first race so just getting used to it getting acquainted with the car once again and then misjudging my braking point completely so I think this first race gives you a good idea of how tricky this car is slash how bad I am at driving it um, but we will improve as the, the races go on here so we move down into 11th by this point 9th as we're fully into the slipstream we're going to go to the left almost into the wall 212 miles an hour was reached there for a split second as we just nip ahead here we're using the classic Williams fly Saudi livery here as we nip up the inside there if someone making a mistake comes flying back in we're side by side here not having any of it lunging straight back into the next corner and we're in p6 by this point so end of lap eight we're going to bring the car in to pit for hard tires so you have to use both tires in the race and we exit the pit lane a few moments later in 10th with the Spaniard just behind us we're going to cover the inside line and you might notice that I'm using the good old cockpit view which I think for this car is actually pretty good and we just get run wide there uh, by the Spaniard uh, by the end of lap 9 look at this big tasty battle someone just drives off the track completely it was a finish driver it might have been Kimi Raikkonen but he knows what he's doing so leave him alone and uh, this is lap number 10 now, P8. Spaniard just scything his way through. We're going to follow him through past the check driver there. And we're up into seventh. Can we overtake the Spaniard and rescue a sixth place finish from the back of the pack? Let's find out. 
I do apologize if the sound is a bit weird on this video uh, with the car uh, if the engine sound is a bit low because I don't know there's some sort of weird glitch with this car where the sound just goes re really nullified for some reason and I don't know why but it, but it just does do that uh, by lap 14 um, this Spaniard here made a mistake and we overtook it and claimed sixth position uh, and natural and natural resting place so up eight positions there not too bad did just want to bring you this start from cyrus really good american streamer uh he was really quick in this combination and i just wanted to bring you this start that he did so he started way way down in 17th but this shows you how the carnage of lap one can really work in your favor um, so he, even by this point, he's still in 16th, so he's only gained one by this point. And a couple of cars have a little bit of a skirmish there. Other cars going very slow. He's two wheels on the grass. I admire the bravery. Heading down to turn four, he's up into 11th by this point. Look at the chaos up in front. Everything's kicking off. Yellow flag. And he's going to overtake another car up the hill towards turn six. And he's in P6. So there you go. He's gone from 17th to 6th in half a lap, in four, basically four corners. Pretty insane. We're going to try and replicate that here. We've gone for the Mercedes livery this time, trying to replicate Lewis Hamilton's drive from the back of the pack. Let's see if we can do it. And uh, decent enough start. We're going to head towards the inside line here. Park it on the inside, park it on the left. This unfortunately is going to put me on the outside for this part of the corner. And we're going to get run slightly wide into the side of the Lotus there. And we've dropped to 19th, which is far from ideal. This uh, Ferrari's all over the place. <laughs> I tried, tried to take avoiding action and I go completely to the wrong side. I did not know which way that guy was going. And uh, we end up off the track. So that was pretty much the opposite of si what Cyrus just did. He, he gained so many and I've uh, lost positions of anything. But we recover something on the end of this lap. Around the outside of this guy, he was a little bit passive there. So we took advantage around the outside and gained 18th place. A couple of guys side by side at this point here. Up into third gear, clunking into third. And he goes a bit narrow. We're gonna go around the outside of him as well. So two outside moves there. Then this guy just decides to drive very slowly for some reason on the racing line. And we can't quite get past him. I'm going to send up the inside into the final corner. And go on a jolly little way. Uh, yellow flag. Almost a big moment there. Luckily that car was ghosted as I went through it. And we kind of salvaged that lap a little bit there. We were down in 19th. Looking down and out. But we end it in 14th. I think there was someone into the pit lane very early. And I break way too late. 100% my mistake. If that was real, if this was real, we would have both been out of the race. Possibly dead. Who knows? He's going to serve his penalty here. Is Anthony Hunt 20. We're going to give him a bit of a boost. A couple of people behind serving penalties. Very easy to get a penalty uh, for just drifting a little bit wide. And unfortunately, we end up inside each other there for a split second. And it doesn't end well for me. As I'm going to lose a further position to the Lotus coming back into the picture. And another one here as I get, um, as I become a victim of the old switcheroo. Actually, no, not quite. Not quite. Keeping 15th. So things are a little bit tricky by this point. Um, having to save fuel as well. You might notice that bottom right of the screen at points of the track. Going into a leaner mix. As this car is rather thirsty for the old petrol. Down the inside into turn four. And that's 14th position. Okay, we're going to try and make some progress here, if at all possible. I just remembered to change the viewpoint. For some reason, I was in the the other view for the start of the race. Anthony Hunt just decides to drive a little bit wide there. And we're going to gain 12th. By this point, end of lap number 5. The finish driver all over the place. We're going to look around the outside. Not quite going to work there. We're in ninth place by this point in time. So lots of different strategies on offer in this race. As um, you do have to do a pit stop. And you can pretty much do it whenever you want. Well, you can. 
but uh, the tyre wear allows you to do that. Up the hill, onto the main straight for the fifth time, or the end of the fifth lap. We're on the outside of the finished driver here. So we're going to go side by side into the braking zone of turn one. Try not to outbreak yourself. We are still side by side. It's good racing, and he's going to claim the position. Going to go for the old switcheroo. Not quite going to work there. Good little battle, though, between the two of us. And we're going to try and maybe nip past into turn four, which seems to be one of the favoured overtaking opportunities on the lap. And he's left the inside open. So we're going to get on the brakes and move up into eighth. Good little battle there with that guy. Good fun. And now we're going to home in on the Norwegian driver here. He's looking a little bit slow, made a mistake. And and he just drives wide there. I can promise you there wasn't contact. He just, just steered left on a right-hander. End of lap six, going to bring the car in. P7 by this point, on to the medium tyre. So the stronger of the two tyres. And we're going to go from here to the end. And we're just checking where the next driver is as we exit the pit lane. It's going to be our fellow Brit. He is going to go past and move into 12th. So I'm down to 13th by this point, but we are on the strongest tyre for the rest of the race. See if we can bring this one home in a well into the top 10, ideally. Up the hill, going to look for the move. Not quite going to happen. Get very close to contact. But this car is very difficult to drive, mainly because it is so powerful. But of course, you know, sort of classic F1 cars don't really have all of the refinement and all of the driver assists and all of that kind of thing to, to help the driver. So it is a bit of an animal, this car. It's got a lot of power. If you put it down in the wrong way, in the wrong gear, at the wrong time, you are asking to meet our good friend Barry R. And he is a very popular guy whenever this car comes out to play. Um, by this point, we're in 10th. This car just comes out of the pit lane just in front of us. And is he going to be able to stay ahead? Yes, he is. Just shows you the importance of any half a second or a second that you can gain. If I was half a second quicker in this race, I would have been ahead there. So the fine margins being clearly shown up the hill. We make a bit of contact, but it's all it's all good in the hood. As uh, we're going down to lean mix four. So this middle section is where we're trying to save fuel. Not as many acceleration zones, so you just need to you can save the fuel there and then use the power mix on the straights down to three for this for the center s then we'll go back down into one for the exit onto the back straight so this guy getting a bit of a poor run almost into the back of him the closing speed was pretty big there and i think he was just changing gear on the exit so if you don't change ideally i think in this guy you need to change up into third gear before you exit a lot of these corners as i just exactly don't do that there I, do it, I, do, I go against exactly what I just said. But for a lot of the corners onto the big straights, you need to be in third gear. Because if you wait, the, the gear change is so clunky and slow, you lose a lot of time. So you have to time your gear shifts. Very, it's very important to get that right. So up into third before we get to the apex there of the final corner. And then you can tell when people don't shift up early because they get a really poor run out of that turn onto the back straight, onto the main straight, sorry. Um, so we've got a good little battle going on here. Sixth place is in sight, trying to follow the French driver through. So we formed a bit of an alliance here as we both on the stronger tyre, trying to make our way through the pack against the guys who are presumably on the harder tyre and struggling towards the end of the race here. As we head down into turn four, drinking game for back straight and turn four, you'll be absolutely trolleyed by about this point in the video if you want to rewind and start again. Now in towards turn one, up behind the German now and you're just trying to line yourself up for a move down the hill trying to tuck into that slipstream make sure we don't run too wide there we're okay space is open is it? it's a bit of a lunge from that far back but we're not going to go for it just make sure we hit oh he actually goes for it on the French driver so a bit of contact I think he's going to back off and try and let him go but this is our opportunity to try to get past the German and we do can we get past the French driver as well just nip up the inside make sure we don't run too wide just keep it side by side. Eventually it opens up and we're going to have the inside for the next corner. So that was a patient overtake. You had to just prise the gap open, wait for it to open a bit more and then drive into it. And we have an opportunity perhaps for fourth, who's just in sight. Might be one position too far, but fifth place is certainly on the ropes at the moment, on the back foot. 
with one and a quarter laps left to go. Just trying to nail this final corner. Crucial to get that right onto the power nice and early. Use the kerb on the exit, onto the straight we go. Not in the slipstream, but we're definitely gaining on this French driver up in front. How about the French driver just behind? We can see him in the mirrors. And I don't think he's quite close enough to go for this move into turn one. It would be an absolutely audacious dive bomb from that far behind. And he doesn't go for it. But we have just one last lap here to try to gain on this driver. Driver in fourth with a penalty. Although we've seen so far that you don't actually lose too much time serving this penalty here at uh, this circuit in this car. And uh, there, there we can see we don't really gain on fourth place at all. On the brakes, you see how much closer we get. And it's that braking performance which is really serving us well by this point in the race. Late on, the last lap, we are low on fuel. Only uh, 0.7 laps of fuel remaining according to the, the data there on the bottom right of the screen. Running two wheels onto the grass. That is uh, legal by Gran Turismo standards. Onto the back of the Frenchman. He gets a poor exit. I, I don't think he shifted correctly. And then, boom! We fire ourselves off into Barrier. I just got caught out completely there. As he was a bit slow, I went to the left. And then, before you know it, I'm in the wall. Because of how quick this car is and how slow my reactions were at that point. So, disappointingly, we finished seventh. Could have been a fifth, could have been a fifth, but just that one little mistake. But a bit unfortunate. One thing I did want to look at, PG Motorsport, the, the fabled PG Motorsport. He won the race from last. Here's a couple of things. We're going to look at his replay. He starts the race in second gear, so that's one less gear shift to do. So that makes sense. That's something we can try for the next race. Um, through, through the first couple of corners, it's just a kind of normal start. You see me on the left there in the Mercedes livery. This is where he gets ahead. Um, but the, the key thing that he does in this race is the strategy. So at the end of the first lap, he comes in off of the hard tyre onto the medium tyre. And that is the crucial thing. Because I feel as though in this car, in this race, in this car, it's very difficult to drive it around other people. It's very good to get into clear air and just focus on yourself. So we're going to try that strategy here on race number three. The lights go out, starting the race in second gear. And you can see we actually get a slightly better launch than the cars ahead. The gap just closes there, unfortunately, and we're not able to go through. Um, we do get to the inside eventually. So we learned the tactic there, starting second gear. We wasn't quite able to capitalise on it. A couple of yellow flags. We get a good run on the exit of the centre S, moving up into 14th position. Johnny Boy there, a little bit wide. We're going to go up the inside here, down the hill towards turn number four. On the brakes, just before the 100 board get nice and narrow on the inside up to 11th up into 9th up into 7th up into 8th up, up into 8th and just there that that one moment just run two wheels onto the onto the artificial grass onto the artificial tarmac whatever you want to call it and I'm just a little bit wide because I went off my tires are now dirty I've got no grip I'm side by side with PG Motorsport so that could have been it was a good start. It's still a good start, technically, but could have been even better if I just didn't make that one tiny error. But that's the thing. When you're driving at such high speed in this car, it's very easy to make mistakes because you've got less time to think about everything. So that's why this car is so tricky. And uh, it's good. It's a really good fun challenge driving it, but it is very difficult. It's, it's a sketchy car at the best of times. Now up the hill... We're going to follow PG Motorsport into the pit lane. In fact, he's just behind us. But we're going to go into the pit lane and go for the alternate strategy. So getting rid of the hard tyre, just with one lap done, onto the medium, which is the faster tyre, of course. But the crucial thing here is we're in clear air. So now we can set some really fast laps without anyone to worry about. Because as soon as you have to worry about someone else around you, I, I, I sense that in this car you lose a fair amount of time trying to concentrate on the other car rather than on the driving so I think this is a good strategy uh, PG Motorsport is going to go for the inside here he was really quick in that previous race so I'm not really concerned about trying to beat him per se if anything we can just try and tuck into his slipstream and just follow him and sort of work together the main race isn't against him the main race is against everyone else at this point so just get your head down set some clean laps go for the alternative strategy and then play the long game in this one see where you end up so in p20 at the moment so it might seem like a really stupid strategy but it's one that 
you lose out to begin with, but then it pays dividends a lot further down the line. Setting a 120.3, which is our fastest lap of the race so far, and a not too bad of a lap. Cut the corner slightly there, just trying to get a little bit too ambitious with our line through the center S. Half a second penalty. Okay, not too much of an issue. We know that that doesn't lose you too much time. Um, Johnny Boy here going to cover the inside. We're still going to go for the inside, though. Up in towards turn number one. Up into 12th by this point. So cars just pitting a little bit later in the race. And because of our cleaner, earlier laps, you're, you're going to make up the ground now. You're going to make up the positions a bit further on into the race. So going to try and serve this penalty here. And, well, I say try. It's not even a choice. You have to serve it. That's the way the game works. And we're going to keep... Keep the car in fourth gear, not worry about gear change, and then boom. I, I'd say it's one of those rare occasions where you actually lose less time than the penalty actually is. So half a second penalty, I don't think I, I don't even think you lose half a second there, serving that penalty. In P12 by this point, on lap six, and just trying to make your way through the traffic, if at all possible. I'm going to go for a big lunge there, still meet the apex quite nicely, and that's 11th position now registered down towards the final corner and we're going to hit the apex quite nicely in third gear get on the power nice and early could have done it a bit earlier there in retrospect and by this point here a few more people pitting as you can see we're going to move up a few more positions um p5 by this point so lap nine and into p4 in fact so the positions coming thick and fast as the race goes on as people go for their pit stops this is the final lap, and the thing I noticed is that, yes, because we pitted so early, your tyres are going to be all over the place by this point. So I'm really struggling. Big moment there, huge moment of oversteer. Just managed to correct it in time. And we're going to bring the car home in P4. So it's actually a very good strategy. It's a very safe strategy to do that, apart from the final couple of laps where the tyres are kind of dead. We're going to try once more. We're going to go once again. Why not? See what we can do in race number four starting p19 once again in the good old mclaren livery looking beautiful indeed starting in second gear of course let's see if we can have a better start so i think that uh, the starts have been good so far but they could be great i want to have some great starts not just merely good ones uh, so through the first couple of corners here it's all kicking off it's a lot of carnage we're going to gain a couple of positions on the exit. You line yourself up for a good exit. Up into P14. A couple of cars spinning out all over the place. I'm not sure which side to go here. Try to go to the right. It doesn't quite work out. I'm in P11, though. That's not too bad. As we head down the hill, and we've got a couple of cars on the inside. It gets kind of skirted wide as if it's a bowling alley. So I'm in P11 still. Up the hill, P10 now. So we've gained nine positions already. That's not too bad at all couple of cars here the portuguese driver and the belgian are going to drive slightly wide we're going to try and follow pg motorsport through we're at p9 now we're getting 10 already okay I'll, I'll i'll take that it's not too bad at all uh, so through the infield section of the circuit trying to keep the car nice and controlled it's very difficult to overtake here especially on lap one it kind of settles down by this point of the race about three quarters of the way into lap one so people into single file by this point now i made it my point that I was going to do maybe a couple more laps compared to PG Motorsport, just mainly because of the the tyre wear at the end of the race. I was thinking maybe instead of just doing one lap on the hard, let's do maybe two or three. That would make it a little bit easier towards the end of the race. Uh, so he's going to go in for his normal pit stop that he does there. And to be fair, it's a good strategy. It works. If you're starting at the back of the pack, that's a good strategy. And then I just completely outbreak myself in a really stupid mistake in towards the first corner. We got overtaken by the Portuguese driver here in the R4M factory team. Heading down towards, um, well, we're going to teleport head here to a yellow flag. Someone getting teleported back in time. And we're going to move up into eighth. So end of lap number three, we're going to go in. And now we're going to go in to the, hard, uh, the medium tyres. So it's a bit of a better split. 11 laps on the mediums rather than 13 not much of a difference but i think uh, you just cut out those worst two laps on the mediums at the, at the end of the race and it was pretty tricky in that previous race trying to drive them around the outside of this guy nice little move there just capitalizing on his mistake that he made and he's gonna have a good run on us down the back straight is he he's close you can see him in the mirrors i don't think that's close enough to go for the move so we're not going to defend it 
and we're going to get through this corner quite nicely. In third gear, getting a nice drive off that turn before we go back up the hill. On the main straight by lap number eight, up into sixth place, as again, the race becomes... Um, uh, comes in your favour towards the end of the race. Setting a 19.7 there on lap 7, uh, which is our best lap in race trim in this car. So that's not too bad at all. Um, by this point, this is lap 13, and I'm, I'm in fourth. Uh, this race hasn't quite gone in my favour. I think I've raced slightly quicker than I did in the previous one, but just by virtue of who's in the race and other things, um, I'm still only in P4. But um, you see there we had a huge moment on the exit of, of the final corner. And I do have uh, the Belgian driver just behind for company who's, who's clearly quicker. He's been gaining on me over the last couple of laps. So I'm under pressure here to get this final lap completed without getting overtaken. And the tyres are, are pretty worn by this point. This is the 11th lap on these tyres. So you have to keep this car under control really be conscious about every little input we make to ensure that this Belgian driver stays behind us and let's not forget he can slipstream past us on the final straight going towards the chequered flag and therefore you really do have to nail every part of this lap to make sure they're not close enough on the exit of the final corner. Cutting the grass there, the typical lawnmower line through that corner as uh, the Gran Turismo special we can call it Obviously, would not be legal in reality, but there you go. Uh, Gran Turismo isn't reality, I suppose. It is a video game, after all. Now, through turn 11, the long looping left, down the hill, back up the hill, in towards Juntzao. And please do roast me in the comments if that was horrific pron pronunciation. Right. He is very close, as you can see. I think I've done just enough. I think I have. He's very close in the slipstream. You mustn't underestimate that slipstream. He does get qu he does get quite close. And if there's one more lap, I think he would have maybe got me, probably got me. But we just managed to hold him off and keep fourth place. But there you go, guys. A um, couple of races in the the good old F1500 TA. Always a chaotic car to drive in Gran Turismo Sport, but always good fun. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sticking around to the end. Get yourself subscribed if you're not already. But um, in the meantime, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.